I spent the next four unhappy years with the John Rolls family, seeking refuge on old sofa that Abe gave to John Rolls for me to enjoy. And I could only think back and remember the good times that I had with Mr. Lincoln, Willie and Tad. Wow, Fido. I had no idea. What a Karen. Exactly, Marcy. Well before her time. So Abe gave specific instructions to John Rolls that I should get to wander their house with my muddy paws and do what I want. You are never to tie Fido up in the backyard by himself. He is a house dog. And as such, he should be allowed inside whenever he scratches at the door. He is not to be scolded for having muddy paws. He should be permitted to join the Rolls family at dinner. He is accustomed to being fed by everyone at the table. Keep this lovely seven-foot-long green horsehair couch that I built for my height, because Fido so loves sitting on it as well. But what I really wanted to do was to be with my family Abe, Willie, Tad, and Mrs. Public Property. For dog's sake. Mrs. Lincoln spent a fortune, almost $40,000 then, more than half a million today, to renovate the White House. Couldn't she just put it all back after we were done? So instead, I hung out with Mr. Roll's kids who were of ages similar to the Lincolns, and I would visit Billy the Barber in Springfield who I spent so much time with as Mr. Lincoln was very clean-shaven in those days. I often wonder, did Mr. Lincoln actually stop going to the barber because he could no longer go with me? Pretty good theory, I think. Right! Right! So Billy the barber sent many letters to the president, and he would often update the president on my condition, and that became part of the historical record of the day. Tell Taddy that his and Willie's dog is alive and kicking, doing well. He stays mostly with John Rolls with his boys who are about the age now that Tad and Willie were when they left for Washington. Signed, William Flerville, Barber. Still, I look fondly back on those precious years and the many days that we spent together. I remember some great moments, like when Mr. Lincoln and I were talking about his newfound interest in cats and whether the family should get more pets, in this case, cats. And I would say to him, Please, Mr. Lincoln, we cannot be a house divided against itself. It will become either one thing, just dogs like me, or all the other. But despite my eloquent words, Mr. Lincoln became the first president to, believe it or not, take cats to the White House, and I had to accept my role as presidential dog in absentia. Wow! That's rough! Rough! I just hate cats. So did you ever see Mr. Lincoln after he left for Washington? Sadly, I never saw Mr. Lincoln ever again. And when his funeral procession returned to Springfield in 1865, John Rolls took me to the funeral where everyone recognized me. That's how important I was to Abe. Many famous photos of me were taken after the funeral, and I was the first presidential dog to ever be photographed. I take great pride that the photos were distributed to many of the people who loved Abraham Lincoln. It became one of the most popular postcards of the era, and that made me very happy. Wow. That is a really painful story, Fido. But at least you were able to provide some relief to all the men, women, and children who were grieving the loss of such a great leader. That really makes you a true dog hero. Indeed. And now, Marcy, through the miracle of Duggar's podcast AI technology, I can clear up some of the uncertainties regarding the photos of me.